This video is brought to you by Storyblocks Video. Oh! Hey guys! Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Copycat Friday, a weekly series in which we recreate effects from famous films and music videos. Today we're having a look at the opening credits of the film Limitless. Now it's an older film from 2011, but that doesn't take away the incredible effect we see in the beginning. Now we're gonna recreate that infinite zoom today and show you guys how it's done. Now there's gonna be a basic idea behind the effect and an advanced technique. Both will be covered in this tutorial. Unfortunately guys, we weren't able to make a long example of the advanced technique since Lorenzo is sick and Janik is in the hospital today, and I have no idea what I'm doing here. So give Lorenzo and Janik some love in the comments below. Now, let's start with a quick moment to thank our sponsor, Storyblocks Video. It's an online library driven by a strong community of filmmakers that share high-quality stock clips up to 4K resolution. There are also effects like transitions, lens flares, sparks, smoke, and more. Or maybe check out the After Effects templates to create stunning visuals in seconds. If you start downloading unlimited video assets, go ahead and click that first link in the description below. For this effect, we did some research, and I found out that the original makers from the effect used a tripod setup with three red cameras. Well, we're also gonna do that, but we're gonna do that later in the video. Now, we're gonna use photos. And we're gonna do that so that everybody can participate. The subject that we are photographing are long streets, because we need distance for this effect. We're gonna start off with the tilted lens, because we found out this was much easier to frame the subject. Then we're gonna move down to the medium lens, and then do the wide lens. Now place your camera and start taking pictures. So the idea is that you take three pictures of a long street. One is a wide angle, then a medium, and finally a zoomed in or tilly shot. And like Jenik said, this is not how they did it in the film Limitless. The editing process will be exactly the same though, only the shooting itself is a little bit different, which we'll get into by the end of the video. Now the basic idea could theoretically be recreated inside Premiere Pro, and we were actually looking for a way to do it in there, but it's such a big hassle that we had to create it inside After Effects. Now what you want to do is start with your first white shot in the bottom of your timeline. On top of there goes your medium shot and finally the tele shot. And this continues. If you have multiple scenes, you could place the pictures of your next locations on top of there as well. But again, start with the wide angle, then to the normal lens and finally the long lens. And once you got everything in your timeline, you could disable all the layers except for the bottom one, which is your starting shot. Now scale this clip so that it matches with the resolution of your composition. You can then go ahead and enable the layer on top of that and scale plus reposition so that it matches with the bottom layer. Now if you have trouble matching it, you could set your opacity for a moment to 50%. Then when you got it in place, bring it back to 100. Now since we're gonna have to match multiple of these layers together, we're gonna parent the bottom layer to the one on top using the Pick Whip tool. Now whenever I scale and reposition the medium shot now, the wide angle shot will just follow along. And just like we started, we will now scale up this medium lens shot. Now, some of you might be familiar with this technique, and that is because Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot actually showed the same technique on an earth zoom effect. Now, it's an older tutorial from him, but still amazingly good. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description below. So, Andrew, thank you so much for that inspiration. Now, moving on, we're now going to enable the long lens shot and scale plus reposition it on the medium lens shot. Now, when it sits in place, you parent the layer below it. Then scale the layer back up and continue this process. Now after three shots at the same location, you could place three new shots here of a different location if you like so. Again, scale the clip to match it with the one below, and parent the bottom clip and scale it back up. Just keep doing this for as long as you want to, or as many shots as you have, of course. But when you're done with everything, we're going to have to define the point where we are going to zoom into. To do that, we are first going to select all of the layers, except for the one on top. Then take the Pick Whip tool and parent everything to the top layer. We're gonna use this layer as the animation controller, but since we're going to zoom in from such a huge distance, our anchor point has to be very precise. 
So from the options of your canvas, locate the grid and guide button and enable the title safe area. And this will add a cross in the middle of your shot. Now using the anchor point tool, we can now move the anchor point of the top layer on the same spot as that cross. You can scroll to zoom in to make sure that it sits perfectly in place. All right, we can now go ahead and create our animation. And since we're already sitting at that ending position, I'm going to create a keyframe for the scale and place that keyframe further in time. Then go back in time and change the scale value to 0.001. And this is gonna depend on the amount of shots that you have. So try a few values here until you see your first shot in full frame. Now, since we're crossing such a huge animation, which is gonna be linear by default, you will notice that the start will go super fast. So we're going to have to turn our animation into an exponential scale. And you can do this by selecting both of the keyframes right click on them and then choose keyframe assistant exponential scale. After Effects will then create the exponential animation for you. And this brings us to the last step. Now, while scrubbing through the animation, we will still see the individual photos. Now, to blend them better together, we're going to mask them. For example, this layer right here. Now you can double click on the rectangle mask tool to apply a mask on it. From the mask options, change the feather to around 300 and the mask expansion to minus 300 so that you definitely don't see the edges anymore. Now do this for all of the layers. And some shots might require you to go through a landmark, such as this bridge. Now what helps here is to disable your layer, but keep it selected while you're creating your mask. Here you want to mask around to the inside of the bridge. As a final touch, you might want to color correct the individual photos if they don't match with their surrounding. Now I like to use the simple curves effect for that, as it gives me great control over the contrast. And that's it. Now let's also have a look at how you can do this with video. Essentially, you want to set up three cameras very close to each other on a tripod. The one has a wide angle lens, the other one has a medium lens, and the last one a tele lens. Simply record all of them together and yeah, that's it. So instead of taking separate shots, you're doing it on the same moment now. In post-production, the process is going to be exactly the same, only here we're working with video clips. And that was it again for Copycat Friday. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to not only hit that subscribe button, but also the bell next to it so that you stay notified whenever we upload new videos. Thank you Storyblocks as well for the support. And as always, stay creative. A weekly series in which we recreate effect. <laughs> that was Google. Hey Google, play the number one song. Oh, I'm curious. That appears to be the number one song currently.